A good place to begin with studying epithelia is actually on the slide uh, labelled lip, and this is because there are uh, two closely related but different epithelia present on this uh, slide, and you can get the exact details of how to find this slide in the uh, practical instructions um, which have been posted to the course uh, Blackboard site. So, uh, as we look at the uh, lip slide uh, in overview at very low magnification, you might be able to see that there are, in fact, what look like two distinct, uh, at least, surfaces on the slide. Uh, one here along the upper half of the slide, and the other here on the lower half of the slide. And this is because this section uh, cuts through the lip and cuts through both the part of the lip that faces to the outside, which is the uh, lower part here, and which is lined with uh, skin or stratified squamous keratinized epithelium, and the part of the lip that faces the interior of the mouth, uh, which is on the upper part of the section here, and this is lined with stratified squamous non-keratinized uh, epithelium, which is generically referred to as mucous membrane. The skin which lines the outside of the lip, if you feel your own lip, um, has some hairs on it. And here are these structures which we can see very clearly even at low magnification. These very large structures here are in fact hair follicles and so there's a number of hairs protruding through the lip here. Now what we're going to do is magnify the image a little bit and um, see what we can see. As we go up in uh, magnification we'll begin on the lower surface that we see down here. And here I'm going to zoom in on a region in which there is a uh, hair follicle clearly visible. So first let's find the uh, surface. Here's the surface here. Uh, here's the epithelium. It extends from here out to here. Uh, from a previous video you'll know that the keratinized layer of the epithelium is the dead uh, layer which desquamates or falls off and this is it here. And the living layer of the uh, epidermis which is the epithelium of the skin extends from where the little hand is here down to here and you'll recollect that it's got a kind of a wavy border so it provides a large surface to interface with the connective tissue underneath. Just as a point of interest, uh, if we look down along this hair follicle here, a couple of things that you would notice if you examined the hair follicles, and it's not necessary to do that if you don't wish to, is that the uh, lining of the hair follicle is also the uh, epidermis, the epithelium, and therefore hairs are truly derivatives of the epithelium, the epidermis of the skin. Uh, extending out from the sides of the hair follicles, and you'll see some of these in planes of section in which you don't see the hair follicle, but you do see structures that look like this. These are specialized type of uh, sweat glands called sebaceous glands that secrete a moisturizing solution called sebum uh, onto the hair itself. And it's this sebum which would give you, for example, greasy hair if you don't wash it. And one of the reasons to uh, look at the sebaceous glands is these are one of the uh, places where, in fact, we can see um, cells and very see very strongly stained uh, cell margins. So we can see the size and the shape of each individual cell in addition to seeing its uh, nucleus. And so we can tell what the cell shape is without having to infer it from nuclear shape and, uh, and arrangement. Now, if we are to look now beneath the uh, epidermis, the epithelium of the skin here, uh, what we would see is as follows. We can't see the basement membrane, um, which we would expect uh, it is present, but we can't see it because it doesn't stain using this technique, and it would be found along here, separating the overlying epithelium, stratified squamous keratinized epithelium, from the underlying connective tissue. The pinkish stained material which you see here is connective tissue. This happens to be dense, irregular connective tissue, and the pink stained material is largely bundles of collagen type 1 which are interwoven with one another and have a generally irregular appearance and so this is classified as dense irregular connective tissue. The blue things which we can see are the nuclei of cells associated with connective tissue. Most of these nuclei will be of fibroblasts but occasionally we'll see structures like this. This isn't the best example of one. This is a small blood vessel, perhaps a capillary, and the two nuclei you see here belong to the endothelial cells, the simple squamous cells that line uh, that capillary. And you can look along underneath the uh, epithelium. You will find regions where there are much more cellular cords of material, such as we can see here. Oftentimes, 
uh, these will be associated with uh, blood vessels. There's one here, but again, not a great example. And in regions like this, we tend to describe the connective tissue material as being more loose connective tissue because it's much more highly cellular than, for example, here where we would describe it as dense irregular connective tissue, or indeed here where we describe it as dense irregular connective tissue. Now we're going to move to the other side of the specimen and we'll look at the stratified squamous non-keratinized uh, epithelium which we see on uh, this surface here. So we'll go to this region here and we'll zoom in and here we go and again this is the uh, surface of the mucous membrane so this is on the inside of the lip it's a moist uh, surface and uh, somewhere along here is where the basement membrane is but we can't see it because it doesn't stain and this is the stratified squamous non-keratinized uh, epithelium as it extends uh, outward here you can tell it's non-keratinized because you can see cell nuclei out at the outermost layers and keratinization involves the death of cells and the loss of their uh, nuclei and other organelles so this is non-keratinized uh, epithelium. One thing you might want to do is to compare the number of cell layers and the general disposition of the cells in stratified squamous non-keratinized epithelium with those in stratified squamous keratinized epithelium. And of course you'll note that there are no hair follicles here because of course there are no hair follicles on the hairs on the uh, inner surface of your lip. If we go up a little bit further in magnification and if we concentrate on the area here directly beneath the uh, epithelium. The mucous membrane here is um, underlain by what is effectively loose connective tissue, so what you see in this region here, and it's made up of a fiber component, again uh, collagen fibers, but organized as rather thinner um, interwoven fibers rather than bundles, so this is the pink material we see here. Interspersed among them are lots of uh, cell nuclei. Most of these are the nuclei of fibroblasts, the cell type that make and secrete connective tissue. But again, some of these nuclei, for example, here and here, belong to endothelial cells that line uh, blood vessels. So directly beneath the epithelium that we see here, we see loose connective tissue, and this then blends into a denser, uh, dense irregular connective tissue, which we see here. Fewer cells in this uh, region here. There's a nice example of a fibroblast. So fewer cells interspersed among what are clearly much thicker, much larger bundles of collagen. Compare this structure here, for example, with the uh, pink um, stain structures, which you see here. So this is loose connective tissue, and this is dense irregular connective tissue. One other thing that's worth looking for on these particular slides, on this particular uh, lip slide, is that there are in fact glands in the lip which secrete a small amount of saliva in on the inner uh, surface of the lip. And these are salivary glands here and here. Now glands themselves are in fact um, epithelial derivatives. Uh, we're looking at them not so much because they're epithelial derivatives, but because the uh, glands have tubes that lead to the surface which dump the uh, secretions of the glands, in this case saliva, out onto the surface of the lip. And these ducts are of course epithelial uh, lined, as uh, all tubes in the body are. And here we see a lumen and a lumen and a lumen, and we can see there's some surrounding uh, epithelium here. If we zoom up a little bit, uh, this would give us a nice example um, here and here of uh, epithelium lining uh, ducts. And one thing that you might be able to do is to decide um, how you might classify this epithelium. Uh, broadly, this looks as if it um, has one or maybe two layers of, uh, of cells, probably two layers of cells, and the um, cells look to me um, largely um, columnar in size. They may be cuboidal if this is in fact uh, genuinely a two-layered structure. So this is either um, simple columnar to stratified cuboidal in appearance. You would never be expected to define this um, definitively as either uh, stratified or simple. Uh, the reason for this is that the epithelium of ducts varies depending where you are in the duct and it varies from simple to um, stratified and the cell height varies from um, columnar to cuboidal. So for example um, if we look along here on this side of the duct here it's quite clearly simple cuboidal epithelium. It appears stratified if we look at this 
uh, portion along here, but this is more likely a plane of section artifact. You can look around in the uh, salivary glands, look at the ducts of um, those ducts which you come across, and make an effort to try and classify the epithelium as being either simple or stratified, and to give some sense of what the shape of the cells that are involved in forming that duct uh, might be. But this is really just an exercise uh, for yourself um, and to help you um, get to know the appearance of epithelium as it's found lining uh, ducts and tubules. So for example, you might see in a region like this, how would you describe this? And uh, to me, this looks as if it is probably simple cuboidal um, with simple cuboidal to maybe low uh, columnar.